are going to paint on fabric. I hope you all are fabulous. Um, today we are actually in our factory and this is our showroom. Just let us know if you, the sound is proper. Um, the Wi-Fi is giving some problems, so just let us know and we'll try to tweak everything as, it, as we progress throughout this workshop. Yaku is actually our cameraman for the day. So any complaints, please direct it, direct it to him. Can you see the comments, Yaku? Yeah. Sorry, Yaku. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Danny. So the comments are there. I hope you can see us. Um, you just let me know if everything is cool before I continue. Yaku, any... Need response. to be a little louder. Okay, so let's just move a little closer. Is it better? I'll, I'll speak up. Okay, so today I'm going to inspire you to paint onto fabric. Very important. We always recommend. And um, before you paint something like a sofa or a ring back or a piece of furniture where you want to paint onto the fabric, Test first. The other thing that we recommend is to paint on the surfaces that are firmly upholstered. So the foam needs to be firm if there is too much bend um, and elasticity in your foam, the paint can just stretch to a certain extent and then it's the times when you will see hairline cracks appear on your surface. So make sure when you want to paint on a piece of upholstery um, furniture that it is nicely and stiffly upholstered. That's the first thing. Second thing, test. Even if it's underneath your piece of furniture, test first to see if you like the feel and the texture of the paint. Remember, paint does change the texture of your fabric. So you won't have the same feel anymore it will change. So make sure you like the change that you are going to experience once painted. So this is a wing bag that I found in our house. Um, it was originally red, as you can see. I'm actually missing Maestro and the kids today. When I started painting this Maestro, they did not want me to paint, but I'm going to show you how fabulous we are going to transform this. So the first very important step when painting onto fabric. And there were questions um, of the face on the Facebook group. If you should add stay soft to your paint, if that will make the paint softer. I did try it with Tunisa on that post I posted earlier this week, and it didn't make uh, a, a difference in the texture of the of the painted surface. So I just left it out. So first of all, I'm going to spray water on my fabric. So I spray. What the water does, it gets absorbed inside your fabric and it also allows you to apply less paint and it also gives the paint more of elasticity. Do not spray water on foam lace surfaces. This is on fabric surfaces. We'll spend some time on foam leather later. So I spray my water, not everywhere, because it's going to dry as you start to paint, and I can rather later continue with the rest. The color that I've selected, after I've played around, and I have some creatives up my sleeve for later, is Daddy's Day. So I'm shaking my bottle, I'm screwing my lips. So please ask the questions and I'll attend to them straight away. I'm using a fiberglass, oh man, I don't have an apron on today, fiberglass um, paintbrush from Hamilton's. Dip my paintbrush in my paint and I paint my first coat. Nou, Mense vraag, wat het ek fout gedoen as ek my verf afveer van een bank wat ek geverf het as ek die bank afveer met een natlap? 
Have you waited long enough for the pain to dry? That's the only thing that I can think went wrong. Um, I'll show you some surfaces that we've painted. Tricky is sitting on a chair that has been chalked every day. It's on phone level. So just make sure that you allowed enough dry time for your paint. That's the only thing that I can think went wrong. Okay. Will you keep me posted? My email address is nadine at chocolatepaint.co.za and I will assist. But chocolate really sets to the surface. Okay, so I'm applying my first coat. Now depending on how firmly the, the fabric has been woven, that will, de that will determine the coat of paint required. Also, when working with a lighter color on something like red, you will apply more coats. In some instances, four to five coats. But with darker colors, you can see the coverage is good. I will still apply my two coats and I'll tell you now when to apply your second coat. So this is the first step. I want to show you um, if I would take a damp cloth and this has been painted this morning. Yeah, this water and I rub my cloth the paint doesn't rub off so it really sits on the surface just make sure you use charcoal and email me to, to determine what is it not at all so we are just going to paint so I'm painting But the clear is that? <laughs> yeah, I feel you, you need to sound more enthusiastic when asking those questions. Okay, the color I'm using is Danny's Day. It's like a midnight blue color. And I'm painting. Okay, once you've applied your first coat, very important is to wait for the paint to be hand dry. Now, how do you know when paint is hand dry? When you touch it, no paint is left on your hand. And then you know you can apply your second coat. And very important, in between every coat, wait for it to be hand dry and then do the next application. Yes, Yaku? Uh, can you paint on velvet? Yeah, but velvet, because it's so furry, it really leaves a rough texture. Personally, it's not something that I like. For a quick fix, and it's an item standing somewhere. Do you want to have it beautiful in an instant? You can do it, but it does change the texture of our because it's a furry um, fabric and painting it. First step to see if you're going to like linen, foam leather, and um, suede are surfaces that I really enjoy painting. Leather couches? Leather, yes. Oh, look at the Chocolate Creations page. There was a lady, and that's actually inspired, that, that was a what inspired me to use to be such dream. And I can't remember the name. And please, Trish or Marina Lee, that lady with a beautiful Demisa stream leather couch, she has cleaned it well, leather and foam leather. So with fabrics, we first spray water on so that the, the foam can absorb the moisture, that you use less paint and it gives more elasticity to your surface. With foam leather, and leather. You first clean the surfaces with lacquer thinners. Here's a foam leather su uh, surface that we've painted. So we've used an old paint drum and then this was bought at a second hand store. Lee actually gave it to us. And we've painted onto the foam leather. And as you can see, you can sit on it. It doesn't crack, it doesn't bend. Foam leather is a stunning surface to paint onto, but clean with your lap of thinness, allow dry time of 20 to 30 minutes, and then start painting on your faux leather, and the same with leather. Okay, any more questions, Yaku? Can you wait longer than hand dry? You can wait longer than hand dry, just not less, less time than hand dry, so that the paint grips to the surface. The reason why you need to wait for hand dry longer is so that when you apply your second coat that you don't remove what you've already been painting onto the surface. Okay. Absolutely, you can wait longer. I'm going to show you here is, yeah, 
people who live closer. Here's a, um, it was actually a table that we transformed into an ottoman. And this we've also painted with matte black. And then we've stenciled with our, one of our stencil patterns in cloud white or dark, that's, I can't remember. But this is also, and you can see, because it's stiffly upholstered, it doesn't um, make hairline cracks. But if there's a lot of movement on your surface, think twice before you paint. Okay. Next, so this is my paint application. Wait for it to be hand dry. As you can see, it's not hand dry yet. Okay. This takes a while, especially because there's water underneath. We've sprayed water first. So we will wait for it to hand dry and then we will apply our second coat. Okay. I'm just going to move it in. Question. Ja. Kan ik mijn banken met choco verf als ze drie jaar terug met een kerelijk geverf is en moet ik nog steeds die bank na het spijt? Nee, dat kan niet meer dat is niet. Ja, kun je dan nou klaar op je banken een solide laag gaan maken. So you just want to paint straight onto that print surface. Okay, so I mix my metallic well. That's a very important step. My mixing stick is still upstairs. Once the factory is in a better condition. At the moment, we are running around like headless chickens. Last night, I couldn't take my socks off because my feet has got blisters everywhere. We are packing shop orders like maniacs. We pulled in extra admin staff to attend to all online orders. Thank you for the, for the awesome support. And I can assure you we work around the clock with many challenges that COVID-19 and the restrictions based on every business, but we're doing our utmost best. So I've mixed my gold, and what I've done, and I just want to repeat some important steps before you paint on a varnish surface. It's important to first clean with lacquer first. Varnish surfaces need to be older than six months before you can paint on it. So my legs initially, was a varnished surface. I painted it with stone wash just to create a base coat. And now I'm going to paint with my metallic paint. Let me just do that now. How many liters of paint will I need for a wing back like this? <laughs> a liter. And it depends on it depends greatly on the color you are going to paint and what the color currently is. So anything from two to four coats might be necessary. But a litre is a good average to start with. So I'm painting my first coat. And it's not a solid coat, so don't worry about it. In my metallic. Can I paint the couches that the kids lie on? <laughs> yeah, definitely. You can, you will see on our website, there's a lounge makeover where I show, I've shown with the home channel how we've painted the, um, the um, suede couch. Yaku and Maestro loves that couch. And they line it every day. If it gets dirty, we simply wipe it with a damp cloth. Okay. Is there a difference between thinners and lacquer thinners? Yeah, can you answer that question for us, please? What's the difference between thinners and lacquer thinners? I don't know. You get thinners that panel beaters uses to, to use uh, to do spray painting with, yeah. and it's not the same as lacquer thinners. So you need to get lacquer thinners. Okay, so use lacquer thinners. Just think it's lacquer to be thin. And ask your hardware store for lacquer thinners. I have not 
We once had a client that experienced a problem because she used thinners, and another client that used automotive thinners. And those products I know contain benzene, which is very oily and the paint can't grip to those surfaces. So, lack of thinners to be safe. This is my first coat of wool, and you will see the metallic pigments aren't as strong as the normal jaw pigments. That is quite normal. It's metallic, genuine metallic particles that's in there. So I've paint a very even first coat, and I'm going to, once this is dry, pour it and wait in between coats of paint to dry. I will apply my second coat. As you can see, I just removed the first coat in my attempt. My second coat too soon. Okay, so that then will wait until it's dry and I'll apply my second coat and most probably a third coat. And now for the part that I can't wait to share with you. So we've done many creative things together throughout lockdown. Something that I really need advice on, I know from Monday the 1st of June there's a level 3 um, coming into place and I don't know who's going to start working. If the time will still suit everyone, should we make these sessions later? Should we try to do it over weekends? Please just give me feedback. Let me know when will suit you um, to have these live demos. I would like to continue with it because I know there are still a lot of people that will only be able to work with level one. Are you ready for the inspiration? I can't wait to show you. So this is this now I still need to paint, which I will do later. And then just let's take this the hair from the mutton cloth. So the sound is bad, you may my unit to probably update. Okay. Now I'm going to remember that creative wall we did. Um, and I've seen the most amazing creations after that. And I thought I might have what am I going to do to give more colour inspiration? During this time, this is really something that we experience. People need colour in their lives. So with paint, it's so, so fabulous. If you want to change colour, you will simply repaint later. So this is what I've been planning for this year. I'm going to show you the final so that you can get a tweak of what it's going to look like. And then I'll show you how I accomplish it. So this will remain day's day. I'm going to make the legs gold and then I'm going to show you how to create that. Okay, so I hope this gives you inspiration and this is how. I'm just going to move it around again so that you can see. I have painted with dark vet on the red and it really took four to five coats to cover that red properly. Now I've mixed 28 mils of paint with our small sample jars. This is the size. I've mixed sample jars, 28 mils, with more or less 30 mils of water. So equal quantity paint and water. In spray bottles I found here at the factory, so this is Paul's place in there. This is gold and water mixed. Daddy's day, dove it. Laughing me, which is a green. And in here is matte black and water. So what I'm going to do, I'm first going to spray some water on my painted surface in Dabit. Dabit is an antique white colour. And then I'm going to have my cloth handy. I'm starting with Laughing Me. You just get the paint to. Trendy nozzle up here. Yeah. Let's see if the matte black works. I'm not going
and this is the blue that's still working, then you will get the idea if you just get all of this, the water the blue, I'll just run it up and rinse it up. Go. So here we have four that's going to work. At the end we'll just add some um, gold to just get the final finish. And here we go with matte black. So I'm painting, spray painting on and I'm letting running let allow it to run down. I think we did it for Dennett. How did you mix? Okay, so I mixed equal quantities paint and water together. 30 milliliters, so it was the sample jars of our chalk or paint, and 30 milliliters water. Mix it together in spray bottles that we all have lying around at home, and you simply spray it on the surface. If you want to paint a chest of drawers, first paint your base coat, like I have done, and then spray or on a canvas, a wall. Um, can you think if you have teenagers in your house and you want to create like a funky um, wall in their rooms, what a great project that this will be. Give them the spray bottles and say create something creative. Okay, this is our session for today, painting onto fabric. First, let's just recap. Spray with water on woven surfaces. Make sure it's natural woven surfaces. Very important. I didn't mention that earlier. Next, test first to make sure that you like the texture that the paint leaves behind on the painted surface. I always say it's a quick fix. It's not necessarily a permanent fix. Um, although in my house everything is permanent. It's painted from head to toes. And then on faux leather, leather surfaces, if there are cracks on your leather surfaces, the paint won't mend it. It will simply go and sit in all those cracks. So bear that in mind. Okay. And then I have a special guest today. Let me just call her. We had so many requests that you want to see the faces behind the chalk colours. See that we are in the factory. I'm going to... Oh, I somewhat feel emotional. This is the first lady, people, that started the chalk journey with us. So the Kelly. Please make your grand entrance.
decorative easy paint. Um, what do you want to do? There's a couple of questions. Okay. Um, how soft is the material of the paintwork? And uh, somebody else says my material is hard after I've painted yeah. the velvet material. Yeah, velvet does turn hard. Personally, I'm not a fan of painting velvet. And even this is not soft. The paint changes the, the feel and the texture. We always recommend test first to see if you are going to like the texture. It's not a permanent fix. It's a temporary fix, a quick fix. Um, so if you quickly want to change something, you know it's a decorative item. Or as I've mentioned, I, in my house we live on this furniture. But they aren't the same texture as they originally was. Paint do change the texture. So you need to test first to make sure that you're going to like it. Otherwise, you just reinforce. Will you paint with a roller? You can. What I've done here is I've painted my first coat with a, with a paintbrush. And then I wrote, because it's very, very, um, a very solid surface. It's not foam with many bends. So these sections, I did quickly roll afterwards with a foam roller, although the cushion on the inside, I just used a paintbrush. Okay, more questions, Jakob? Can you store the paint in the spray bottles? And if you can, for how long? <laughs> Okay, so water contaminates paint. That's why we recommend mix little, little at a time. Use cooled down boiling water when you do your mix. And then depending on the quality of the water, that will depend on how long the, the paint will stay fresh. And as you've seen earlier, you need to rinse your nozzles well, else the paint will harden inside. And I've only sprayed earlier today, so it's important to rinse afterwards. Okay? No, it's just somebody commenting on the velvet that does go hard. Yeah, velvet. I personally don't like velvet. Although in our entrance there's a velvet couch where clients sit, but it's, yeah, it does. It's because like a carpet as well. And we've received so many questions, can you paint on carpets? And that also, because it has the fiber standing up, the paint really dries hard on those fiber ends. And somebody's asking, what are you going to paint if you've got nothing left in your own house? Um, my friend, I also would like to know what that answer is. <laughs> I've said to Jakob, if winter is coming less here in Gauteng, I'll tackle the lawn. You mustn't, you shouldn't worry, I'll find something. It's the kind of day. Yeah. Let me just call her. Um, Jamie, I'm waiting for the feeling. Will you please pull it down? Yeah. With the bottom of paint. Okay, so here we paint it onto metal. Now let's recap metal. Previously we said it's a your metal has got rust on it, it's important to first use a rust converter, treat the rust, then start painting. The areas that don't have rust, we still clean well with lacquer thinners. You will see on our YouTube channel, please go like, follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We show this space and the entire makeover behind the scenes, what we've done in here. What's the color on the wall? Share of stone. The share of stone is a dark charcoal color, warm undertone, stunning color. I just love it. Yeah, we show them here. Here I've made drawings on this wall with chalk. Chalk is also a chalk board paint. So I've literally taken some chalk and made some photo frame drawings. This is an old vintage cupboard. If my mother-in-law is watching, Omar, um, I think she nearly had a heart attack when we started painting this, but now she just loves it too much. So we painted a few colors. We started with coral stone underneath, only on the edges, so not everywhere. And then we painted with cloud white on top. And I've taken a dirty cloth with some vinyl stone rubbed on it. And I just wiped the cloud white with that, and then we sanded. So it has a very, you can see from previous coats of paint and the colors and the sanding, how the different colors get emphasized. There is chocolate on our walls. So let me take this one off. These are all, oh, no, don't worry. <laughs> this is all pictures, picture frames that we bought from Mr. Price. Just turned the backing around and then we've made our own 
you go and see him. Now, Kelly, I told the people that we started this journey together, and would you have ever thought that this was going to happen when you first started? Hey, Kelly, Kelly? Mm -hmm. huh? Yes. It was only the two of us. And now we have a family full of people. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so happy that we, we're going. Wow. Oh, <laughs> show them your colors, Michele. This is my color. I love it. <laughs> so, Michele is Olivia, and this is Olivia's style. And, oh, Olivia, I'm oh. very proud of you. Oh, I told you. the people earlier, I actually had a lump in my throat. Between oh, where we started, mm -hmm. And how much we've learned and grown throughout this journey. Oh, I've been doing the order like doing 250 now, five myself. And I'm doing videos and videos and videos. Thanks, Nkele. Thanks, Somebody's saying it's one of their favorite colors, Nkele. What a man's got to do. What a man's got to do. If that song plays on the radio, everybody stops. We stand away from the tables. We, we are working and packing in order. We first dance, get some joy into our, into our works um, space, and then we continue. Thank you for the great support. I do want to mention that next week, Saturday, we have an event with the Toast and Home magazine. If you go to this site, you will see the, the link. I personally, honestly, haven't had time to go there yet. Um, there is a ticket fee to that. If you want to attend it, it would be awesome. It's going to, it's going to be in a, in a ser series of three workshops, three Saturdays, every second Saturday, starting next Saturday. And you and your family can sit around the table with me and Vickers, and we are going to paint something together. Have a great afternoon, everybody. I'll see you next week, Tuesday, and with some Father's Day inspiration. Keep well, keep 